Is it worth boosting your Mustang? Let's find out. This is my 2022 Mustang GT. Uh, I bought it brand new. I ordered it out the way that I that I wanted it. I had it specced out and everything. Um, just give you a quick look inside. I have, excuse me, I have a Recaro package in here, six speed manual, and it's a 401A premium with the sound. Black accent package. We're gonna talk about reliability. Uh, reliability in these things is not something you typically have to worry about. Um, keep oil in it, change your oil, um, just take care of your car and it will take care of you. And this, it's not gonna break on you unless you're sitting there banging off the rev limiter, doing donuts in damn parking lots, or you're just beating the shit out of it every time you drive it. Um, it's, it's gonna last you and unless you're pushing like an insane amount of horsepower i really wouldn't worry about it make sure your tune's good if your tune's good you should be you should be good to go um as i said these things handle a lot of abuse my last one made 936 wheel horsepower and the mt82 transmission held up just fine you talk about all these damn horror stories about how they're so shitty and it it did great and it was stock clutch stock trans maybe that's why um it, it was kind of like a weak link in there to keep it from actually destroying itself. But I mean, so far this one's been great too. And it's only got 4,500 miles on it, but, uh, the D four is a lot worse than the, than the, uh, regular MT 82. So there's that for you. It's fuel choice. Uh, if you're going to be daily driving the car and it is not easy to get 85, I just would probably just stay away from it. Unless you order like a big 55 gallon drum, which is what I do. Um, I don't order it, but I go to the gas station, get a 55 gallon drum, bring it home and I'll pump it straight into the car. If you're E85, on the other hand, you will make a astronomical, like a night and day difference amount of horsepower and it's going to be overall it's going to be healthier for the vehicle um it it's safer to run e85 than it is 93 as long as you're testing it yada 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 um i still would say it's worth going e85 if you're not going to drive the car every day uh i don't drive this thing like ever so it's not a big deal if i have to go put fuel in it typically I fill every time i drive it um so that that's kind of that jazz. The next thing we're going to be talking about is the noises these cars produce. Holy cow. This thing sounds ridiculous. I'm going to insert a video for you guys. <laughs> it being twin turbo... It, it, it it's nutty dude it's just nutty you hear these turbos spooling all the time you can hear it at idle hell I'm considering taking the exhaust off of it just so the turbos are louder probably make just a hair more horsepower too that'd be cool um yeah i mean it sounds ridiculous and i smile ear to ear every time i damn drive this thing because of it but let's not forget about the sentry cars too they it's different. They got that blow off valve and anytime you're off the gas and deselling, it's going to blow off and it's going to. You're going to sound like a 747 flying through the sky, you know, and it turns heads too. It really does. And combined with a set of headers. They sound ridiculous. I'll insert a video if I can find one from my previous car. What is the maintenance like on a boosted car? Um, it's really not that much different from a stock car really um you just i would just change your oil a little bit more frequently make sure you're checking it more frequently and 
aside from that, you should be, you should really be good to go, man. Um, other than shit that might possibly break, you really don't have to worry about anything. And it, it's, it's not a headache, not any more than stock, especially if you don't drive it every day. Best options for a daily driver, right? So you want to boost your car. It's a daily driver. These are some of the things that, that I would kind of lean towards. A root style blower. Uh, a lot of people talk shit on Roush. I do too. Um, I would never put a Roush on my car, but if you want to keep that warranty, that is the that is the way to go. Um, you can get a Roush installed on your car and keep the factory warranty, and you're gonna have pretty good power, and and be able to enjoy your car. And keep the warranty. That is absolutely huge because if it just happens to break, I don't foresee it happening. But if it happens to break because you're driving like a moron, um, you have that kind of to fall back on. Root style blowers in general, though, the Whipple is a great choice. Um, if you're going to get any kind of root style blower, that's the one I would go for. Your next best option is going to be your centrifugal. I absolutely love mine, and I'd put it towards the top of the list, but it would be a little bit biased. That car drove stock. It drove exactly how it did stock, except when you matted it, it was a damn rocket ship. And it takes a little bit longer to build the boost. You kind of play a game of catch-up because it works off of RPMs. The higher your RPMs are, it's kind of how your boost climbs. Um, similar to a turbo, except you're not using the exhaust to you're not using the exhaust to spin it and keep in mind these supercharger kits are pretty comparable in price um i paid 7500 bucks with the tune for my centrifugal kit and i think a whipple was maybe like a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars more um you can find some pretty good deals in, on like black friday or cyber monday or christmas time um terry from team beefcake will take care of you this is not a sponsored video, by the way. That's just who I ordered all my stuff from. My last option, um, as far as what I would get for a daily driver, uh, that would definitely be the turbos. Don't do it if you're... <laughs> it, it's, it's a headache if you're going to be twin turboed and doing a daily, daily driver build. Um, these being bottom mounts, if you have a lowered car, you're going to scrape everywhere. I literally hit everywhere. If like there's uneven lanes, I will switch lanes and I will hear it hit on the bottom. Another side to it, whether if, even if you get top mount, if you have to do any kind of maintenance on it, all the charge pipe has to come out. And I haven't had that kit to experience it myself, but just from just from what I've heard from buddies and whatnot that do have it, yeah, definitely not worth On it. On the other side of the spectrum, though, if you are looking for straight horsepower, the damn twin turbo kit is the way to go. Uh, it's You'll get the most horsepower per boost that you're pushing, and the noise is just, they're nutty. If you want to go fast, get a twin turbo kit. You can do it with the other ones, but twin turbo. To sum everything up, it is absolutely worth boosting your car. If you've got the money for it, if you've got the means to take care of it, and if you just want cheap horsepower, that is the way to go, hands down. If you have any questions for me, feel free to drop a comment. I'll respond as I see them. Uh, follow me on Instagram. It's a crowd plower and subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you guys later, and thanks for watching.